sorry, if there's someone, Amala, if you could just have someone to try and turn on the, the stationary mic here, please. It's, maybe it's simple, but I haven't figured it out. I just press a few buttons here and see what happens. It's been two and a half years since we were here. Hello? Hello? Can I make this bigger? Um, yeah, that's as big as it gets. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's a, a very famous street in Cork called Patrick Street, affectionately known as Panna. Yeah. And there was um, a lady of the evening in Panna one night, and this guy came up and he said, listen, uh, how much do you charge? And she said, 150 euro. So he said, oh, that's too much for me. But you know what? I have two Ireland medals that I won back in 1960. Would that be She said, that's fine. So they went off and did their business. So the next time you charge, 150 euro. And he said, uh, oh, are you any good? And she said, well, I have two Ireland medals. <laughs> And Helen, there were beautiful words. And one good thing I'd add is that Catherine makes the best soda bread in town. The best soda bread. Uh, to all of us that down our room today on Southern Road, we're here to honor one of the great Cork men ever to arrive in North American shores. Unfortunately, Henry Ford couldn't make it, so we're here. <laughs> I'm delighted to announce that after huge fundraising, much begging, much scrounging, and enormous expense, we're indeed honored to welcome direct from Cork City, the real capital of Ireland, the Lord Mayor of Cork, the Honorable Michael Murphy. Come on, Michael. expenses that really help, right? And they gave me Khan's bio about five minutes ago. So here we go. Thanks for leaving the bicycle for me at the airport too. Right, Cork Association, very, very generous. I arrived at, I came down to the, four, the 427 and I was established. So I went into the Baronic store there and I asked for a pint of Murphy's. And all they had were cans of Guinness. Here, with those prices, I could have had three pints of Beamish back in Cork. Anyway, Khan, this is known facts about Khan. Khan was not the, the sharpest child in the class of primary school. In fact, when he passed from second class to third class, he was so excited, he cut himself shaving. <laughs> and in secondary school, Khan, Khan made a name for himself in secondary school. We went to the same school together in Cork, Clark's Grisery, Turner's Cross. How many Turner's Cross people are here today? We've got about four or five of them. Clark's Grisery. Okay. Anyway, Khan went, uh, Clark's Grisery was a total GA boys' school. Hurling of football, presentation brothers, blah, blah, blah. But Khan committed a huge mortal sin. He played soccer. It was like he turned Protestant, like. Right? You know what I mean? And uh, with fair juice to Khan, Khan turned out to be quite a soccer player. He played with Lachine, Crofton, Glasgow Celtic, I mean, Cork Celtic. And uh, in fact, when they found out that Khan wasn't wanted anymore in the Cork team, the manager called him up and said, Hey, Khan boy, would you bring your boots? As Tommy might need them. <laughs> so Khan met Catherine at the Majorca Ballroom in Cross Haven in Cork. How many people have ever been to the Majorca in Cork? Crossway? Very good, very good. So anyway, Dickie Rock was playing that night, and Khan shifted her. Do you know the word shifted? <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, they drove home in the car, and Khan and Catherine were dragging away. And Catherine said to Khan, Khan, would you like to go into the back seat? And he said, no, no, I'd rather sit here in the front with you. <laughs> so in 1966, they decided to emigrate, and they weren't married yet. So they were at Shannon Airport. Remember the old tickets to Shannon Airport in 1966? So they were ready to check in, and Khan said to Catherine, Jesus, he made a huge mistake, he said, we should have brought the bloody piano with us. Catherine said, why would you mean? Because I left the tickets on top of the piano. <laughs> so they moved to Burlington, and of course they weren't married yet, they slept in separate bedrooms. However, later that year they got married, and three months later Fiona was born. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. And 
Anyway, Conant was applied for a job, and of course he got a job at uh, IBM. And I went for his interview, and he said, listen, the guy said, did you ever have a job before? He said, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, back in Ireland, I was a pilot. He said, you're a pilot, oh yeah. He said, my brother John used to chop the wood, and I used to pilot. <laughs> And we said, no, no, we're looking for somebody really, really, really responsible. Really responsible. Well, that young man, Khan said, like my last job, whenever anything went wrong, I was responsible. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we have a, as mayor of Cork, we have this beautiful. This beautiful certificate direct from the mayor of Cork to Con and Catherine. Frame and Cork Association. Thank you so much for the welcome. Thanks very much for having me as Lord Mayor of Cork. So it's back to John Cawley right now. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Cork Association, we're so proud to have Con and Catherine as Irish Persons of the Year. They have meant so much to us in the association. Whenever there was an issue to be resolved, we could always call on Con and Catherine to help out. And on a personal note, I could not ask for better friends. You both were there for me in, sick and thin, in sickness and health, and you're always the first out of the gate, from the heart, much love and gratitude. Thank you, John and Michael. That was great.